guys, Brittany here. Welcome back. And we are interviewing Allison and Brock for the new sh upcoming show, Hamster and Gretel. How are you guys feeling today? Doing well. It's been a relatively easy and fun day. Yeah, I don't know how you wouldn't be having fun. We're talking about superheroes with a bunch of voice actors and Dan Povenmire and promoting our new show. We're stoked. Yeah. Speaking of superheroes, you guys are super villains in this show. What's that like for you guys? Well, most of the characters I've portrayed have all been fighting for good. And what I will say is that if you spin the information a little bit, my character Lauren, who is also known as the Destructress, is fighting for a cause she believes in. It just may not be for the betterment of everyone else. Right. Just for yourself. It's perfect. It's valid. Nothing Listen, wrong with that. you said that. You don't put words in my mouth. <laughs> I'm just trying to do my best with what I know. What about you? I think every villain is a hero in their own mind. And in this case, I play Lyle, the fist puncher, and I'm the best. I punch you with my fists. <laughs> and it's so fun to be free because I, Allison and I, we both play siblings on the show. We just met today, but it, this there's a definite familial vibe. And I actually have a younger sister who is way smarter than me. And so this was not at all like a, a, a hard to get into this, this headspace of a really, really strong uh, presence of an older sibling. And to be able to sort of like turn my brain off and get to that excitement of, okay, if I could lift a boat and throw it at someone who took my bubble gun, I would absolutely do that. And it's it's kind of primal and fun, and so yeah, it's great. I was I was gonna ask, um, what how voice acting? What helps with the dynamic for you guys from recording in two separate places for that you guys wanted to interact? That's with? a really good question. Yeah, it's a great question. So for me, because we also did this during the pandemic, so we're recording in our homes, and it's even further removed from the typical recording process. However, I want to start with the thread that we share, which is we both worked with Dan before. So Dan is very much glue in the sense of he has a certain comedic humor, he has a certain writing style, a certain cadence, and so we both probably, you know, caught on to what he was going for tonally, but then one of us records first, and often they can play back whatever that, you know, chosen take was, and so in this case, I went first, but this is where you know the real pro comes in, because he's like, okay, I can take what you did, and I can make it sound like we were having a conversation in the same room. Well, I, and I, I think it also goes to show how much Allison brings to it, because her initial instinct on the character of the Destructress helped the younger brother by three minutes um, sort of come to life and you hear them and it does sound like it is, it is really crazy when you think about it we, we do sound like siblings but we never had a discussion we never talked and, and even we have an amazing um, director Sarah Sherman uh, who dialogue directs us and helps us um, obviously Dan's in the room but we have just a whole team of collaborators that are writing the words drawing the pictures and then the fact that we can take the words off the page and together come up with this like 3D, well two dimensional, but this breathing thing, it's amazing. I think it, it's also worth mentioning that when we're in the booth, we're expressing and exploring a spectrum of things and yeah. not everything gets used. No. So there were probably plenty of takes that didn't feel as compatible and just to give the rest of the team the credit they deserve, they know how to do the surgery of finding that tone and building the rhythm with and alongside us. Yeah, yeah. and uh, you know, with Dan, it's uh, this is like my I think my third go around playing villains for Dan. <laughs> I was villains in uh, Milo Murphy's Law, uh, uh, Candace Against the Universe. I'm a lot of the uh, exploding aliens, but it's like really really fun uh, because I think Dan's vision and a lot of you know the writing team too. It's the idea that. The bad guys are inept, and there's it's it's there's no plan. The plan is to just we'll come up with it as we go, and I I resonate with that on a deep level. I'm truly disorganized and spontaneous, and I love that. I'm about the chaotic energy. We don't know what we're doing here. Yeah. Hopefully, you have a plan. <laughs> That's awesome. I'll end this on this question. If anyone from, let's say, the Phineas and Ferb universe, since technically this is the same universe, but it is. Different city, yes. far away. Yes. Maybe not so far. Ooh. I don't know. I, I don't know. know. <laughs> it, I mean, I, it'd be weird, you know. I don't know. I don't we, know. we have a cast member that may have worked on that other project. Oh, I wonder who. I yeah. don't know. It could be anybody. Uh, it could be anybody. all of us. <laughs> it might be all of us. Um, I, What's I, your question? Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah, sorry, I got excited. Um, <laughs> I'm like, wait, we're yeah, we jumped in. Yeah, we did it. All good, all good. Uh, how would your those characters from that universe, from Phineas and Ferb, interact or uh, have an opinion of your guys' characters in this? 
Well, you know what I find really funny, and it is kind of a through line, is that the immediate family doesn't always know what the kids are up to. And so I think Phineas and Ferb would probably clue in that there's something more going on, but I don't know that their parents would. And similarly, I don't know that Carolina and the show, the mom, would clue into what Phineas and Ferb were up to all the time. So I think there's kind of like a generational thing at play. What do you think? I, I mean, now I'm just thinking about like the PTA of all the, the, the Dan shows. So all the moms from the different <laughs> shows, like somehow meeting. Because that's more, that to me, I'm like, what are these parents up to? Because they are all hardworking and incredible. And, and that's the thing about the whole universe is like, there's so many of these characters that you fall in love with. And it, seriously, I mean, I, obviously Perry the Platypus and, and uh, like, I just, it, they fit. And I think the reason that they work is because these characters come from a place of they're, they're, they're filled with love and they are inspired and they're fun. They're just fun. So I think I would love to see them all in the show. Who knows what will happen? I have to say, now that you've said that, we focus too much on Phineas and Verb, but we focus too much on Hamster and Gretel. We need the PTA meeting as an entire episode. Yes. Or like Parents Anonymous, yes. they're like, hi, I'm a parent and I didn't know that my child was a superhero. <laughs> I didn't know my child built a roller coaster in the backyard. Right. Totally. Yes. Humanity's only hope is Super Gretel. We're saved. Hi, my name is Gretel, this is my hamster hamster, and we'll be taking you to jail today. But what can I do? Watch Hamster and Gretel on Disney Channel. I bet I'm indestructible. We are not testing that out.